Hi, I'm Michelle Pierce, CEO of the Australian Christian Lobby, and welcome to the Weekly Wrap, where we bring you the latest in politics from a Christian perspective. Firstly, I'd like to mention how appalling it is to see an anti-Semitic sentiment rise up around the world and sadly in our nation. The indefensible cries to gas the Jews recorded in Sydney at one of our country's most iconic venues so soon after the terrorist attack on Israel has been a talking point around the world of the outright desire to see the extinction of not only Israel but of Jewish people anywhere. This was a stain on the very fabric of our nation and we must not let this sentiment continue to grow. We stand with the people of Israel who were brutally attacked by a barbaric terrorist organisation, Hamas. Regardless of the context, this was an unconscionable terrorist attack. Israel must defend itself and our stand is to pray for the protection of the innocent on both sides, Jewish people and Palestinians, and to pray for a swift end to this conflict in a way that will allow for lasting and meaningful peace in the entire region. Secondly, on the issue of gender, in a recent speech delivered by Greg Donnelly to the New South Wales Parliament, Mr Donnelly brought attention to Maple Leaf House, a government-funded gender-affirming clinic near Newcastle. His report uncovered disturbing issues at the clinic, such as substandard record-keeping, the coercion of parents into complying with affirmative treatments, and a lack of diagnostic screening before prescribing puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones. Shockingly, parents were reportedly told, in the presence of their children, that their child might commit suicide unless they're transitioned to another sex. This is manipulation, coercion, and an abuse of the trust given to medical professionals to provide meaningful care for their patients. There is growing data in contrast to their claims showing that gender transition does not alleviate existing psychiatric problems, and there is even deterioration of psychiatric conditions during cross-sex hormone treatment. We agree with the Honourable Greg Donnelly and call for an inquiry into the government-funded Maple Leaf House to ensure that children and young people will not be taken advantage of. Meanwhile, in a video from our New South Wales State Director, Joshua Rowe, he shared about the concerning push for gender self-identification laws being considered now by the New South Wales Government. The issue of self-sex ID where a person aged 16 or above can alter their sex on their birth certificate to their self-assigned gender raises questions about how we should approach people struggling with gender dysphoria. While it is essential to provide love and care to those genuinely struggling with this issue, we advocate for a focus on helping affected individuals reconcile their gender incongruence with the reality of their biological sex. It's crucial for our legislators to understand that affirming someone's misconception about themselves is not the best way to support and love them. We should emphasize the transformative power of truth, the power of God's truth, and reject the notion that medical transition is the only path to belonging and acceptance, something that many countries around the world are waking up to. Finally, we want to thank everyone who has so generously supported our November appeal. Our work is made possible by your generosity and your contributions are needed now more than ever. Thank you for standing with us and for standing up for those unable to stand for themselves. Please continue to pray for us and the many issues we are advocating on as we continue to make truth public in our nation. God bless you and I'll see you next week.